Hi everybody and welcome back to my last vlog of the year. So this vlog is about non-melanoma skin cancer and I think it's really topical because I see people in GP all of the time with moles that they're worried about and I personally have had two basal cell carcinomas removed and there's a reason for that and we'll go into it. So let's start. So non-melanoma skin cancers are one of the most common skin cancers in the world. There are two main types. One is a basal cell carcinoma or a BCC and the other one is a squamous cell carcinoma or an SCC. They are more common on the head, the backs of the hands, the upper back and chest, basically where the sun has been. So who gets these cancers? Well, essentially anybody that's had a lot of sun exposure and especially if they've had lots of burn and that's why I get them because as a teenager and in my 20s I used to go out in the sun regularly and burn to a crisp and I'm fair skinned so I don't go very brown anyway but I do go very, very red and I'm paying the price for that now so I have to be vigilant of my skin. They're more men than women and that could be that men work outside without their shirts on and they often have bald heads. Older people, because obviously the DNA damage is done and a long time the body becomes slightly worse at correcting that damage when it needs to. People with fairer skin, so people like me, and I am very fair. Any suntan you see on me today is from a bottle, I promise you, um, and I have blue eyes. Anybody that's had a lot of radiation um, exposure in the past, so lots of x-rays or radiotherapy, for example, um, they're more at risk. If you've had a previous skin cancer, you're more at risk because it means you've got skin damage, so you're more likely to get more. Um, if you have a long-term skin disease or inflammation or injury, that can leave you prone to skin cancer. If you have psoriasis treatment, so basically that light treatment that I spoke about in the last vlog, um, that puts you more at risk, which is why it's carefully limited. People that have the very rare condition, xeroderma pigmentosa, are more at risk of skin cancer. Those that are immunocompromised, so having treatment for cancer, for example. People that have HPV are more prone to getting anal or genital skin cancer. So that's another good reason to vaccinate our children and get rid of HPV. And people that smoke are more likely to get squamous cell carcinomas, so SCCs. So that's who gets it. How do we know if we've got one? Well, self-examination is absolutely crucial and I can say this because I have found every single one of mine. So because I put this lovely fake tan on every day, I moisturise my whole body so I'm very used to how it feels and anytime there's anything different, I notice it, I look at it and I keep an eye on it and that's how I found mine. So I would recommend just checking yourself all over once a month, do it in a mirror, use another mirror to look at places where you can't see, so your back, the back of your legs etc, because you need to check everywhere and backs as we've said are very common places for these cancers. And just be aware of how your body looks and feels and if there's anything different about it. If you see anything on the skin that has changed in size, shape, colour, is it an unusual lump? Is it feeling rough? Is it bleeding? See your GP. So what are these cancers and what's the prognosis? So let's split them out into a BCC and an SCC. So a BCC is a cancer of the basal cell of the epidermis, so some of the top layers of the skin. Sometimes it's called a rodent ulcer, which I think is a horrible description, but that is what it's called. 75% of all skin cancers in the UK are BCCs and that's good news because they're very slow growing in the main and they're easy to get rid of. Very rarely do they spread to other body parts, although occasionally um, you can get more aggressive basal cell carcinomas that spread quickly and can migrate to other body parts and bones. But in the main, if they're treated early, um, they just don't spread and they're easy to cut out and they're almost always cured. So sometimes, however, they can recur after you've had a treatment. So that's called local recurrence. And then a squamous cell carcinoma or an SCC is a cancer of the kerat keratinocytes in the outer layer of the skin. So the crusty layer of the skin, when it goes crusty, is caused by keratin and that's where SCCs are. They are the second most common type of skin cancer in the UK, 
most people who get one, like the basal cell carcinomas, will be completely cured. They're usually slow growing, a little bit faster than the BCCs, but still slow growing, and they rarely spread. They can spread, however, if you leave them, but generally that time span is years rather than weeks, as it were. Very rarely you can get, just as with the BCC, a very aggressive form of SCC, which can, which can spread quickly and go to other body parts. But as I've said, that's rare. So what do they look like? Well, how long is a piece of string? The description of an SCC or a BCC is almost endless. They can be a variety of marks on the skin. So as I said before, anything new, anything changing, anything growing, get checked out. But there are some rules as to what they look like. So BCCs can be often flat, firm, pale or yellow patches. They can be raised, red, itchy patches. They can be small, pink, red, translucent, shiny, pearly bumps. And you can sometimes see the blood vessels growing underneath them and spreading out a bit like a clock face. They can be um, little growths, pinhead growths, with raised edges that roll in um, and they can be lower in the centre and sometimes again have these visible um, blood vessels. Sometimes they can have blue or brown patches in the middle, especially those pearly ones. They can be open sores or areas of skin that are not healing or when you do treat them they go away and they come back and that's how mine presented, my first one. So I had a little patch on my shoulder here that was less than a centimetre, looked like a bit of eczema, wasn't very itchy, didn't go away. When I put steroid cream on it, it did go away and then it sprung straight back again. And then one day I was out in the summer with a little top on and I noticed that it was bleeding from my bag touching it. And that's when I went to have it checked out. So they can also look like small patches of eczema. And as I've just said, they can be fragile and bleed quite easily. So those are the warning signs for BCC. An SCC tend to, as I've said, appear in the sun-exposed places. So face, ears, neck, lips, hands, and sometimes in scars or sores. Um, they can be rough, red, scaly patches, which possibly crust. And that's because of that ker keratin element to them. And they can bleed. They can be open sores which don't heal or come back after you've treated them, just like the BCCs. Or they can be warty, so they can just look a bit like a wart on top. So I think, as you can see, the descriptions of these things is almost impossible to pin down to, to you know, anything that's manageable. And that's why, again, anything unusual, growing, new, or that you're worried about, see a GP. Because, as I've said, they can present in anyway with very little difference to the skin sometimes so it can just be a mark on the skin that you can barely see but it behaves slightly different to normal skin i'm going to put a link up at the end of this um, vlog to a gallery of skin cancer so you can just see the variation and what you might be looking for so how do you get a diagnosis? Well, you go along to your friendly GP, like me, and the GP will have a look and see what they think. And if they're at all suspicious, they will refer you. Um, the referral, depending on what it is, will either be a two-week wait referral, if they think it's a squamous cell carcinoma, um, or a basal cell carcinoma with unusual features. And, or if it's a standard-looking basal cell carcinoma, it will be a routine referral to dermatology. Once you're there, the dermatologist will look at the lesion under a special lamp called a dermatoscope, which allows them to see the blood vessels and everything going on underneath. And if they're worried about it, they will then do a biopsy. Now that can either be a biopsy to see what it is, so they take a small part of it, put it under a microscope and then decide. And if they're worried about it at that point, they will come back and take the rest away. Or it can be what we call an excision biopsy. So they'll take the whole thing away from the start, Put it under the microscope and make sure that they got all of the edges. If they didn't get all of the edges then they would still have to come back but ordinarily most times they won't. For me I've always had an excision biopsy because I just don't want the hassle of having a biopsy and then having to go back and having it all, all over again. But that's my personal choice. So what are the treatments? So the treatments can be divided up into surgery, curatage and cautery, cryotherapy, creams, photodynamic therapy and radiotherapy and I'll go through those for you. 
So surgery, as I've said, is surgical excision. So you completely cut the cancer out. If it's a big area, and this would be why a biopsy would be needed first, so if it's a really big area that might need a skin graft, so for example, if you had one right across your nose, you might need a skin graft, or in an area that's difficult with, with not very much skin to close up afterwards, then a biopsy is advised first, and then you may need a skin graft, but obviously those are for big lesions. The idea here is you catch it early when it's small. Um, there's something called MOHS micrographic surgery, and this is specialist surgery. And it's specialist surgery if there's a high risk of cancer, or if it's spreading, or a risk of it returning. If it's in an important area where there is minimal skin removal pos possible, so you want to take away as least skin as possible when you're doing the surgery. And in this surgery, the margins are checked immediately while you're still there and before it's stitched up, so that if you need to take the surgeon needs to take more edges away, they can. So that's very specialist surgery. In the main, your dermatologist in their room can do um, an excision for you and take it away. Um, all of mine have been done that way. So curatage and electroquartery. So this is really done for small cancers. It's done with a local anaesthetic and a spoon-shaped blade or a circular blade is used to scrape the cancer off the surface of the skin and then using heat, the quartery bit of it, it's then sealed up to stop it bleeding. Now you do get a scar in the shape of the lesion that's been removed and you may need to have it done two or three times. So that's the upsides and the downsides of that. But again that can usually be done in the dermatologist's room. So some GPs even do that um, in their minor surgery clinics. So cryotherapy, so this is liquid nitrogen that's used to freeze a lesion and make it die. Um, it can only be used for early stage cancers. So what happens is, just like if you had a Baruch or a Walt, the lesion is frozen using, using the liquid nitrogen. It scabs over afterwards and then it should fall off after a month or so. It may scar again where the area is left behind. But that's another quite simple way that doesn't need a local anaesthetic. Now creams, there are two main creams that we can use for these cancers. So we're looking mainly at the early basal cell carcinoma and we use their, a chemotherapy cream called 5-fluoracil. 5-fluoracil. One of those words again, I'm afraid. <clears throat> so we can also use an immune stimulator called a miquimod. So they do two different things, but they both are applied to the skin where the lesion is they can have to happen over quite some time, so you may need to have to apply the cream for up to six weeks. Now, you're sore during that time, and for a few weeks afterwards, you get redness, flaking, peeling, itching, and you can also get some blistering and ulceration. So it can be quite dramatic when you're having that treatment, but if you've got, for example, somebody like me, who has the potential to have lots of these as I get older and older, I think I might even have one on my nose here, which might be quite difficult to remove, then it becomes quite a good solution, although you probably don't go out to any parties where you might scare someone, unless it's Halloween, of course. So those creams are um, the chemotherapy cream called Five, Fluoracil and the immune stimulator Imiquimod. Um, then there's photodynamic therapy, so otherwise known as PDT. This can also be used for, for BCC, basal cell carcinomas, and you put on a cream to the skin which makes it sensitive to light, and then after that you apply a strong light source, um, it burns the area, it can cause scarring, but it's another option. And then there's radiotherapy. So radiotherapy is low dose radiation when it comes to skin cancers. It can be used for both BCCs and SCCs if surgery is unsuitable for whatever reason, if the cancer is over a large area or it's a very difficult area for surgery. And it's sometimes used after surgery to, re to prevent that local recurrence that I spoke about earlier. Then there's electrochemotherapy, and this again is if surgery has failed or if it's not suitable, and if radio and chemotherapy creams haven't worked. Um, we put chemotherapy directly into the skin cancer or into a vein to kill the skin cancer, and then we direct a short pulse of electricity at the skin cancer. We need a general anaesthetic for this, that's the other thing. So 
that's important because it's big and afterwards it can be quite painful and it usually needs to be repeated so you know there are a lot of downsides to that so it really is a last resort if you really can't have surgery so what's the prognosis if you get a BCC or an SCC the good news is it's brilliant so 9 out of 10 people are completely cured and in the main those that one person in 10 who isn't completely cured it's generally not been noticed for quite some time so it's just been allowed to advance so in summary basal cell carcinomas bccs and squamous cell carcinomas sccs are generally very slow growing skin cancers they make up most of the skin cancers in the uk with basal cell carcinomas making up 75 percent if they caught a uh, are caught early they're usually completely curable so that's great news for any cancer nine out of ten people are cured completely the most important thing and i can't get this across enough is be skin aware you know we always talk to women about being breast aware be skin aware check yourself over once a month from head to toe anything new or anything that's changing growing any area of skin that just doesn't look like the other areas of skin get your GP to check it out. You can't be too careful. And as we get older, our chances of getting these cancers grows. Avoid the sun, don't burn. Look what you can do from a bottle. And if anybody wants to know, I use L'Oreal Summer Body Light Sun Kiss Look, and it's excellent. It's a moisturizer and I pop it on all over after my shower. I wish I'd known this when I was 17 and all of those painful burns could be vanished. So, I hope that's given you a summary of the non-melanoma skin cancers. I will in the coming weeks cover melanoma skin cancer, which is more serious than these and not quite so curable. So we do need to talk about that as it's serious. I'm going to wish you, obviously, a happy Christmas and happy new year because I'm going to take a break over Christmas. Um, I might put out just a little message um, just to say hi. Um, some of the topics that I'm going to be doing in the new year are things, lots of women's health, um, I was asked today to do menorrhagia, which is heavy period bleeding, so I will be doing that in the new year. I will be doing the, not the melanoma skin cancers, and I'll be doing anything else you ask me to do. So please ask me to do anything you want, and I will research it and cover it. As always, I'll put some links into the comments afterwards, so you've got some resources. Have a look at the gallery, and have a fabulous Christmas and Happy New Year, and I'll see you in 2019.